you when you get together any sporting people, when I get together with Jonathan, and we've had a few good nights out yeah. over the years, you know, I'm looking at you as a fan. I couldn't possibly have played rugby at the level you did. I look at you, I, I think the same. I don't know how you get in the ring and do what you do. But when you two get together, even outside or whatever, what is, what is it that, that joins sporting people who play at a top level, do you think? Well, what is it, like, before and after? <laughs> <laughs> oh, current. Uh, I just think it's just the enjoyment of sport in general. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, just talk about your training, your experiences, the people you meet, and that's, you know, from the start of your sporting career to the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what brings everyone together, irrespective of what sport it is, you have a, you know, a common ground and you just, you know, start talking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nicola, um, two Olympic gold medals yep. and now you want to become world champion. How are you preparing for this? Oh, I'm training really hard at the moment. Um, this is this is another one of my goals. Um, I left the amateurs. I'd achieved everything that there was to achieve as an amateur and, yeah. and I thought, right, I need a new goal. I'm always nervous. The, mm. the nervous energy gives you the adrenaline that gives you that extra edge. I, I think if I, was, if I wasn't nervous when I was getting into a match, I'd feel like I, I wasn't taking my opponent very seriously. Yeah. And I never want to do that. I always want to come in and, and treat every opponent as a world mm. champion. So. Ten years ago, you broke a bone in your back yeah. and were bedridden mm. for three months. And then you recovered from that and... The decision by the International Olympics Committee to recognise women's boxing completely changed your fate, didn't it? You must have thought ten years ago, this is... I'm finished. This isn't... You know, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I, I fell down the stairs. I was completely sober, by the way. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 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 I was uh, packing my stuff into my gym bag. My uh, bandage was left slightly hanging out and I tripped over it. Fell down the stairs, um, did my did my back in, so I was I was bedridden. The only thing you can do really is rest. Couldn't mm. train. Um, I thought my career was over, and um, but luckily I had a lot of friends and family and a good good team um, at GB behind me to help me get back on my back on my feet and and get training. But it takes a lot of um, mental determination yeah. to to really, to get back up from. Jonathan, from that. you you had a. A stunning career as a rugby player, one of the greats to ever play the game, and I don't say that to blow smoke up you. It's a, it's a, a fact for any rugby fans watching, they'll know what I mean. But, but off the pitch, you had some extraordinarily difficult times mm. to deal with. You lost your father and your yeah. first wife to yeah. cancer. You ended up bringing up your kids pretty much on your own for years after that. What, what was that like for you, having dealt with all the challenges on the pitch <sighs> so successfully? To deal with that kind of hammer blow off the pitch, I think it's, it, you know, it's obviously very difficult, and uh, you see stories like that every every day. And uh, you've got to compartmentalise. You know, you've got your job to do. Mm. You work, you know, as, a, as an amateur, then a professional, and then you just put a lid on that box, and then you go back to your family life and uh, and try and keep it as normal as you as you possibly can. And uh, you know, I had good family and friends around me when it, when it happened. Uh, the 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 sport drove me, it kept me disciplined. The stiff upper lip. And resilient. And whether it's now a, a stick to beat uh, yeah, people with. Yeah. In other words, you know, have we gone a little bit too far where everyone's encouraged to emote all the time about everything and actually having a stiff upper lip has now become something that's used as a derogatory thing? What do you, what do you think? It's, it's very difficult, you know. There's, you know uh, mental toughness is, uh, you know, is, a, is a great trait to have mm. and um, you've just got to be careful. I think it's gone a little bit over the top now. It's gone a bit berserk. Mm. Um, and I think different generations have different sayings about different um, things. So it is very, very difficult. And, and the sad thing for me is the fact that if you think of saying something, you think, oh, you've got to check yourself to think if it's wrong. You know, and, 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 it's, and you're trying to maybe, you know, yeah, people ask you what you've got to do and how you've got to, how can you help people? And, you, and you're scared to say what you think and what you did because, you know, you have, you have to be tough and you have to, you know, put a, a tin hat on and get on with it. Like, well, that's the thing, you see, in sport, you see, it's really interesting, isn't it? In sport, we teach, and my three sons have all played a lot of sport, mm. and their coaches, you know, always the coaching is very much the kind of the, the man up school of, yeah. you know, get up. If you get knocked down, get up and keep going, the Rocky Balboa thing. And I'm sure, Nicola, in your, in your world, I, I bet your coach is yeah. just the same, right? Yeah. Get up, you know, and they're tough and, and they're hard. And they try yeah. and teach sports people uh, mental resilience and mental toughness. And yet, if I try and suggest that we teach kids that 
outside of sport now in schools, which I think is really important. There's so much anxiety now with children and so on. I've got a young daughter, so I'm very worried about yeah. what I'm reading about other yeah. people. When I suggest that we teach mental toughness and resilience and try and perhaps reframe the mental health debate as let's be tougher mentally, I get hounded for it. And I don't understand why, because in sport, it's seen as the right way to get people to be tougher. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think exactly the same. I think it, it should be. I think we should be able to apply um, a lot of the things that we do in sport um, to apply to school as well, to get the, the kids involved. I mean, uh, I work with a charity called Fight for Peace, mm -hmm. and by getting the kids into sport, um, we can then get them into education and into into schools and and off of the streets. So yeah. um, I think it's a I think it's a, a there's a lot they can learn from that definitely. Yeah. I, think, I think bullying, you know, bullying is a, if you mention the word bullying, everyone kind of you mm. know gasps. And I think it's it's one of these things where you know when I went to rugby league from rugby union, bullying it just it was on a different level. I was mm. called so many things, mm. you know, it was, it was ridiculous. But it's Life, you have, you have many tests in life, mm. and sometimes when you go through things as a, as a kid, you know, you've got to front up and, uh, and face up to it. And I do think life is tough. You know, and I say tough. to my kids, yeah. life's not going to everyone. do you any favours, right? And you have, to, you have to be tough, because a lot of the stuff that I see younger people in particular now appearing to be incapable of dealing with mm. is what I would think is normal life stuff. Yeah, the trouble is, I think that for some people, being tough... The implication is that's all you can be. And then when they don't feel tough, they feel like they fail. I think there's a and softness allowing, as well. Yeah, there's a softness as well. You know, in, in, in every situation, it, it, it all comes down to man management. Yeah. And you've got to be, you know, you either can be soft or you can be, or you've you can got be to tough. Be allowed to be vulnerable as well. Yes, it, it's I think not that's, all about. Otherwise, meet. mental toughness. I totally I, listen. I agree with that. It's not about just being hard, mm. hard, hard. But I do think we could all benefit from being a little bit more resilient. Yeah. That you I go agree. back to the wartime generation in particular, yeah. Yeah. and you talk, just talk to the older people who had to live through that. Mm. Yeah. It's extraordinarily it is. Yeah. It is. impressive. And, Although, as and, we know, to Winston Churchill, one of the most famous. Sufferers of depression. Well, he was, so, but he was also a guy who, when it really mattered, did <clears throat> really be very tough for the country. Yeah. And that's, that's the double-edged thing about him. Jonathan, very quickly, what's your Jonathan? prediction for the Six yeah, Nations? Yeah, Six Nations, quickly. Uh, Ireland are favourites. Uh, Ireland are favourites. Uh, Wales out of five to one. Rightly so. Wales are a good bet. If this, this weekend is, the big, uh, is, is a big, big weekend, big start. Ireland, France, England, Wales. France, Wales. Where, if, whoever wins the Ireland, Wales, uh, Wales, France game, I mm. think will go very, very well. Mm. And then... But you have to, you, you have to, you know, go with Ireland. They are the form side. And do you still, as a Welsh legend, enjoy watching England lose everything they ever played? No, I, I, you know, I, I was there when England won the World Cup in Australia, and you know they were playing against Australia. So obviously, I was going to cheer for England. Um, so, um, but no, I, I just hope it's a great competition. I think it is a great competition, and it, it, it's uh, supporters that mm. make it fantastic. Well, you're a legend on the pitch, also a legend off the pitch. My brother used to run a, the Punch Bowl <laughs> pub in, uh, in London, and he said no sportsman that ever came through those doors could drink more than you. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I'm really if Rupert's watching, I'm, I'm, really I'm sure he wanted me, really, want me to acknowledge I'm really proud of that. The, the beast that was Davis <laughs> in the Punch Bowl. Nick, uh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very your much. Thank you. Great yeah, good luck. Okay, go get him. Go get him. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're currently <laughs> undefeated, aren't you? My kind of feminist. <laughs>